Hi, folks. Bob Odenkirk and Ray Seahorn here. Or, as you may know us, Jimmy McGill and Kim Wexler. Or, as I officially became known this season, Saul Goodman. You're who? I'm Saul Goodman. As a little bonus, we're going to be answering some fan questions. Let's roll the clip. Hi, this is Roger Tinklebaum. I'm from Tampa, Florida. <laughs> and I'd like to ask a question for Bob Odenkirk. Do you feel ever like you riding on the coattails of Brian Cranston? I do, actually, all the time. And they're wonderful coattails. If you can grab a hold, I highly recommend you do. All right, next question. Shellpool on Twitter asked, if you guys could choose a show to do a crossover episode with, what would it be? Oh, I know. What would you do? What's your answer? It doesn't work storyline-wise at all. I just want us to be on their show with them is Pen15. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you know Pen15? Look at that. What would you do? Seinfeld. <laughs> we should be on Seinfeld. <laughs> Somehow there's a mix there. I think I, I was on Seinfeld. I know, but I mean, as Jimmy McGill. Yes. Saul Goodman. At Luke Valentine on Instagram asks, who do you think would win a lawsuit against each other, Kim or Jimmy? Well, Jimmy would cheat and win, and it would be sad and horrible. It'd be really wrong. He'd feel terrible about it, but first he'd win and do something nasty. I think Kim would win, but she would, she'd kill herself trying to do it. She would do absolutely anything trying to prove that she could win. Barb Rankin on Facebook asks, as the seasons have progressed, what change to your character's behavior has surprised you the most? Well, Jimmy McGill, as he's become Saul Goodman, has kind of developed a, a sense of himself that um, he's, he's sort of owning all the sides of himself. And I actually really like that. I wasn't sure how his journey would go, but I was surprised to see him doing that. When I look at the overall arc of Kim in season five, it was surprising, but it's hard for me to answer because I was grateful that we did all of these um, reveals and changes and shifts in her incrementally, one at a time. So it's it's a strange thing, you know. When we're, when we're in it, the surprise is you're trying to find a way to ground them so you don't actually feel like they're a big shock to your character's system, if that makes sense. I think Kim asking Jimmy to get married is a whopper. Either we end this now and enjoy the time we had and go our separate ways, or we're... What? Maybe we get married? That's a yeah. Big, it's a big tectonic Yes, you're right. You know what? Shift. That's a good one. And it kind of makes because me... Because it took me a while to piece together what was happening in her head. Yeah, she's curious. <laughs> All right. Aunt Jake Rittenauer on Twitter asked, Bob, how many Cinnabons have you eaten while filming? <laughs> All right, I'm 57 years old, so I can't be eating Cinnabons. But it's very hard to not eat a Cinnabon when it's right in front of you. So I'm going to say I've had a half of Cinnabon every time we do a scene. So that Total? Would be, During the whole shoot? I, I honestly think I've had about a half of one per. So that would be probably have eaten two Cinnabons at this point. That's I really, <laughs> by the way, you don't need a whole Cinnabon to enjoy that flavor. Why don't they make, I know they make small ones. They could even make them a quarter sized and you'd still get a lot of pleasure out of it. At Kelsey Dietering on Twitter asks, Ray, so much of what Kim thinks and feels is conveyed by just your facial reactions. How do you still manage to navigate so many undertones in a scene? Okay, well, one of the secrets is that <laughs> the scripts on Better Call Saul from all, all of our illustrious writers, and Bob will agree with me, they're written um, with a narrative tone. There's a lot of novel type writing in it where they are um, letting you know some of the characters' inner thoughts. Then from there, they expect and enable and empower all of us to come up with their own connective tissue. It's one of my favorite parts of the job is figuring out what she's thinking in those quiet moments and realizing that often the audience has been my most closest confidant in scenes because they are the only people that know what she's thinking. And then she enters these rooms where she puts on a mask. That's been a lot of fun to cultivate that relationship with the audience. Haley Owens on Facebook asks, how are your own personalities similar to those of your characters and how are your own personalities different? Uh, wow, um, I'm very different from Jimmy McGill. <laughs> I do think that I have an earnestness about me that he also has, and uh, probably at times a kind of an excitement over plans or ideas that I share with the character. But in many ways, I find him to be very immature, uh, though I hope likable. 
I completely identify with Kim's need to and the fact that she takes solace from that idea of if you work hard enough, everything will be okay. That you can somehow control your life and your destiny by being self-reliant and working yourself out of any hole. I understand that. I'm not nearly as still as her. I have no ability to not fill silences or <laughs> be quiet in a room. That's one of your great qualities. <laughs> Uh, it's one of my favorite things about you. I believe we have another question from a devoted fan. Hi, this is Philip Bixby from Reno, Nevada. <laughs> and my question is for both of you. What's your favorite sushi restaurant in Albuquerque? Ah, uh, hmm. Ah. Hmm. Uh... Raw fish from the ocean in Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have sushi restaurants, and we do go to them. Japanese kitchen, right? Isn't that something? That's a thing. Mostly we eat barbecue. I highly recommend that you trade sushi for barbecue when you're in Albuquerque. Or barbecue your sushi. John Davidson on Facebook asks, Bob, what has been the most difficult scene for you to shoot? Emotions, story, other. Look, the desert scenes in 508 were tough. They were physically very hard, it was. But enjoyable too, I like pushing things to a limit. They often want my character to shift from one emotion to another quickly, to go from happiness to despair. That's very hard for me to do, and I'm not sure I've even delivered for them, but I think they've made that then part of the character. So I just do it the best I can, and I think that then becomes, that becomes who the character is. At Kim Wexler on Twitter asks, does Kim and Jimmy's pet fish have a name? I believe everyone calls it Carl, but there are two, in case one won't come out of the trailer. We have two. Aren't they called Carl? Yeah, I think so. They're Carl. both Carl. W. Axel Foley asks, Ray, in your preparation for the role, had you created your own backstory? Yes. I mean, I think you have to. Most actors do. And with this very interesting and kind of enigmatic writing they had for Kim in the beginning, where she's very specific about when she speaks and often chooses not to speak, it's my job to fill in the subtext of why she is choosing to observe or participate in any given scene. You start racking up more and more pieces of the jigsaw puzzle as you go, not knowing the whole picture you're going to make, which has been a lot of fun with Vince and Peter and our writer's room. So this season, as you guys saw, they showed this little piece of a backstory with her mom and the young woman playing me, and both of the actors knocked it out of the park. And I have to say, I always thought she was raised by or had some sort of guardianship relationship with an addict in her life. Because from the very beginning, it's just, there's a, there's a need to have boundaries that she had from, from the pilot episode. Um, while having a comfortability and an attraction to chaos that she keeps trying to right and straighten. And she's also used to cleaning up after people, so there you go. Wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That's great. From at Rensis Christ asking, what Better Call Saul character do you personally identify with the most? I mean, I think I probably identify with Kim and the fact that she is trying to recognize what matters in the world and live by standards that will get her respected and you know struggling with that but always trying to fit in to the broader world i think that's something i recognize and want identify with yeah yeah i identify with probably kim and parts of Jimmy the most. And it's because of their always feeling a little bit like an outsider. Even in a situation where you're no longer the outsider, just it doesn't matter, that thing that's just in you that tells you that you somehow don't belong there and need to work hard to fit in. I identify with those qualities in both of them. Yeah. At Michaelaz12 on Instagram asks, if you woke up as your characters one day, what would you do? The answer for me is I would not behave like my character. <laughs> I would go to work, because she gets to be in 2002 when there's no pandemic. <laughs> and it looks like we have one final question from another passionate fan. Hi, this is Steve Quisenberry from Davenport, Iowa. <laughs> and I'd like to find out if Walter White is ever going to show up on Better Call Saul. My fingers are crossed. You know what, I think it'll come down to whether Matthew Broderick is willing to shave his head. Mm. Thank you all for watching. We love you guys, and we'll see you next season. <laughs>